Hey and welcome, it's Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well and having a wonderful day. In this video, I'm going to be talking all about how you can improve Streamlabs OBS and your broadcast, how you can improve the stability of your stream and things that you can do specifically whilst you are live within Streamlabs OBS to optimize the experience for your viewers and of course for your PC as well. This is the second in a four part series of videos that I've done and all the videos will be linked in the description below. The first video was all about settings within Streamlabs OBS. The third video was all about PC and software settings that you can make to optimize everything. And the fourth is game specific settings that you can change as a last resort. If you're still finding that you've got a bit of a choppy stream. So you'll find this very useful if you've tried to optimize Streamlabs OBS with the settings from the first video, but maybe you're still experiencing some issues or if you just want some extra tips and hints on what to do whilst you are live to optimize the experience a little bit better for your PC. As always, if you find it useful, please thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe if you want to. <laughs> And if you've got any questions, feel free to jump on my Twitch stream. I stream most days at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. Okay, let's get into it. This is actually quite a short video here. Um, there's not a great deal of things you can do, but there are some key things you can do to optimize the experience. First of all, when you run Streamlabs OBS, I'd recommend right clicking and running it as administrator. That will mean that you give priority to Streamlabs OBS and your system will give priority because you're running it as administrator. It can also sort out some stability issues. If you're finding that Streamlabs OBS is crashing in particular, that might be something that allows it to take priority over potentially other applications. Remember, if it's a choice between a number of things crashing on your PC, potentially if you've got not so great hardware or whatever, it's better that your game crashes than the stream itself. So running as administrator might resolve that. Secondly, whilst you are live, you can simply right click on the open panel in Streamlabs OBS and click performance mode. What this does is it just takes away the preview of what's going on in your broadcast. Now, you may be really accustomed to having the preview on and therefore you might not be comfortable turning that off. What I would recommend here is over time, as you start to get more and more comfortable, desensitize yourself to needing to look at the screen because for two reasons first of all you get this performance improvement if you need it the second reason is you're more likely to then engage better with the camera and the chat if you're not constantly looking at what you're doing on the screen you're just actually comfortable with viewing things on the screen and, and interacting with the camera and of course gaming you might want to be good at gameplay or something like that i mean not for me the gameplay is definitely not important on my streams the gameplay is literally the worst part of my streams Tune into my streams if you want to see me get wrecked by eight-year-olds on Fortnite, okay? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I just want to quickly illustrate the performance kick that you get from setting up performance mode here. We can see I'm currently running at 5% CPU usage, and this is just to run Streamlabs OBS, okay? I've got four or five different browsers open and some pretty heavy applications, so that's actually not too bad. If I've got things closed down and whatever, that'll be more like 3 to 4% for me normally. Now, the moment I disable performance mode, it's having to deal with this previewer here. And you can see straight away it goes up significantly here. This is less of a problem if your PC is high end, okay? If your PC's got the power to deal with multiple monitors and, you know, multiple applications being run at the same time, you've got loads of RAM and all that sort of stuff, this is going to be less of an issue for you. If your PC is really starting to struggle, a very simple thing you can do is right click and performance mode. The next tips are pretty simple one but can have a bit of an impact on how Streamlabs OBS itself runs when you are live. Try to not have both an application capture which captures a specific application and broadcast that as well as a display capture. Try not to have both of those sources active at the same time particularly if they are replicating the same thing. Now of course your display capture will literally just replicate what's on your screen no matter what is there whereas an application capture you can select a specific application and it basically blocks out anything else that may be on the screen at the time. Now, if you're playing full screen games, the chances are those two things are exactly the same. If you've got both sources trying to compete against each other and both of those sources turned on, that's going to hoover up resources on your PC. It's going to mean that Streamlabs OBS isn't going to work as well. And it also means that you run a small risk and it is a very small risk if you've got sort of medium to high level hardware. It may crash or you may get frame drops or other issues like that. Just to illustrate this here, if I add a source here and have a display capture and also a game capture i would have it so that only one of them is turned on with the eyeball and the other one is not i can't illustrate this without changing scenes because all of my live assets are added as a scene in this section here live assets so these are all my base assets and i've added it here as a 
seen. Which brings me to my next tip. Try to optimize your sources as much as possible. If you've got one source that's being used across multiple different scenes, rather than adding that one source to every single scene, particularly if that one source has got multiple elements to it, it'd be better to add it as a scene of its own. So it's just got all the elements in one scene and then adding the source as a scene here. This is a really good tip, particularly for things like the base assets that you use. So things that you might use across loads of different scenes, consistent assets sets and sources but also separately if you use it for let's say your webcam which might have a border which might have labels which might have some animation on it and some other stuff like that you may want to bundle all of those into one scene of its own and then add that whole collection of sources as one single scene into your live scenes i think that makes a small performance boost to your streamlabs obs but i also think it makes it easier as well because it then means you only have to make one change if you're making a change to let's say for example the webcam assets. I think it also makes a difference in terms of practicality and how you manage your scenes and sources. Because if you think about it logically, if you're only having to make change to one element, if it's a group of elements, which then applies to all of your live scenes, you're going to have a consistent experience across all of those scenes for those bundles of elements. And it also means you'll probably save time because you're only making the change once on one scene and that then applies elsewhere. There are some other benefits to doing that, particularly if you're into using different camera angles for the same camera source and things like that, but I'm not going to get into that in this particular video. Another tip a little bit along the veins of that is to definitely delete and remove any sources that are not being used. If you think that you're going to use the sources again in like a month or two, it's normally worth just dumping them in a completely different scene here out the way if you're not using them regularly. So you can still have those same sources within Streamlabs OBS, but on your live scene, you want to minimize the number of sources that you're using, particularly if you've got a sort of low to middle end piece or if you're experiencing performance issues, frame drops or stream lag and stuff like that. It's always easy when you first start streaming to just try and throw the kitchen sink at it. Loads of different sources, loads of browser sources, every single widget under the sun. My personal feeling is that simplicity is massively underrated. The more simple and clean you can keep your stream, in my opinion, the higher quality your stream will be. But that's of course personal preference. One thing's for sure though, the more sources you add to a particular scene, the more resource that uses up within the software and the more processes that are going on from that application. And therefore, there's more of a risk that you are going to get stream lag, stream issues, and stability issues. It's also just useful to continually evaluate how much or little your sources are being used. For instance, I've got the Streamlabs OBS stream boss that's on my stream, but lately I've found in the last month or two, it's not really being used a lot. And therefore, I'm considering just removing it. Having it in the stream doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me anymore. And as time goes by, you may find that certain scenes or certain sources that you have are just not as important as they were when you first had them. And that's a lot of what streaming is about, is about the trial and error process. So definitely delete any sources that you're not using or not adding a lot of value to your stream and of course to your viewers. The final tip I've got is regards to the chat panel. Obviously you can pop out the chat panel here. The chat panel itself obviously brings in data and information and it increases the load on your Streamlabs OBS. You may want to just trial and error using this within Chrome if you've already got Chrome open. If you've not already got Chrome open, then chances are it's going to be optimized within Streamlabs. Streamlabs OBS. However, if you've got Chrome open and you may instead want to use Stream Manager instead of Streamlabs OBS, you can simply minimize Streamlabs OBS. You won't need to use the chat panel here. You can pop the chat panel in and it's not going to be used. One quick tip here is if you go into the settings tab and click on appearance, you can change the side that the chat panel actually sits on within Streamlabs OBS. It doesn't affect the performance in any way, but if you've got the chat panel by default on the right hand side and, it meet, and it's more convenient for it to be on the left in terms of your engagement with the camera and minimizing head movements, you can simply check this here to show the live doc, the chat on the left hand side. So there you have it. Hopefully you found that really, really useful. Streaming is not just about how you optimize your Streamlabs OBS settings. That's important. That's very important, actually. And that's the first video that I've done in the series. This is the second video in the series that has allowed you to hopefully think a little bit more about the specific things that you do inside Streamlabs OBS whilst you are live. And those things can definitely impact your stream, which is really important because you don't want to turn viewers off. It's already competitive enough on Twitch without having issues with your stream itself, the quality that is. Don't forget to check out the other three videos in the series that I mentioned earlier. They're all linked in the description. Once again, feel free to like the video, feel free to sub, and of course, have a wonderful day. See you later.